Uh, so guys, it's repeat back. I've literally just finished watching Fast Lane, so I figured why wait. I'll uh, do my review video now. Um, I apologise if it sounds like I'm speaking a bit quietly. See, me girlfriend and kids are all in bed. It's uh, ten to four in the morning over here. So uh, yeah, they're all fast on. Um, so yeah, like I said, payback has literally just finished. Um, so here are my thoughts um, on the event. I actually got to watch the pre-show, which is something I've never done before properly. I watched the IC match before WrestleMania, but that was purely by sort of uh, accident. So uh, yeah, I watched the pre-show. Um, the pre-show match was obviously Enzo and Big Cass versus Gallows and Anderson. Um, it was a good match. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I'm a fan of both teams. And those of you who've been watching my videos for a while will know that. So um, it was a tough one for me. I didn't really have a favourite in it, but uh, Enzo and Cass got the win. So uh, my girlfriend stayed up for that match. She was quite happy with the result of that. She's uh, a bit of an Enzo and Cass fan. And then next up was the Miz TV segment, which had Finn Balor as the uh, guest on it. Uh, basically, it was the usual Miz just being an asshole. Uh, winding up Finn Balor, who eventually stood up, um, told Miz that all Miz TV segments always end up with him getting his ass kicked, but he was going to be the bigger man and walk away. Miz, uh, obviously, sorry, by this point, was hiding behind Maurice, as he usually does, because let's face it, the guy's a bitch. And so, um, yeah, but last he was going to be the bigger man and walk away. Uh, Miz sort of took exception to that. Maurice was out of the way. So, um, Balor uh, ended up kicking Miz's ass, which was fun. Um, again, my girlfriend was actually cheering that on. She hates the Miz, can't stand Maurice. Um, so, she was happy that Finn Balor kicked uh, Miz's ass, as were uh, about 99% of the audience there from the sounds of it. So the actual show started off and the first match was Jericho versus Owens for the US title. Um, I thought it was a great opening match. <coughs> Excuse me. I honestly thought I knew who was going to win this. Um, but I was wrong. I was so wrong. It was, like I said, a great match. Plenty of back and forth. Um, towards the back end of the match, um, Jericho had Owens in the walls of Jericho. Owens did the same as he did at WrestleMania, put his finger literally onto the bottom rope. The referee called Jericho off to, to release the move. Jericho saw it, so he went after Owens' hand, stamped his hand a couple of times in the ring, ended up outside, put Owens' hand behind the steel steps and kicked him into it to go back into the ring. Owens was in the corner, you know, the ref was uh, pushing Jericho away, and when Jericho came in, Owens poked him in the eye, went for a quick cheap roll up. Jericho kicked out, got him back in the walls, and Owens tapped. Um, so Jericho heads over to SmackDown as US champion. I honestly thought that with Jericho leaving soon to go to him with Fozzie, that Owens would have retained and then Styles would have taken the US title. But it looks like Styles might be taking the title from Jericho. So we'll have to wait and see, but uh, I think that's a possibility. So yeah, Jericho wins, heads off to SmackDown US Champion, like I say. I didn't see it coming. Uh, next matchup was Austin Aries versus Neville for the Cruiserweight title. I really enjoyed this match. It excuse me, the odds are coming down. <coughs> yeah, I really enjoyed this match a lot more than I thought I would. And uh, there wasn't just high spots, there was plenty of uh, you know, map-based action. Um, towards the back end of the match, it looked like Aries was going to get the win with the last chancery. But Neville grabbed hold of the referee and threw him, got himself disqualified, retains his title, but Aries gets the win. Uh, BS ending to a great match, in my opinion. Absolute bullshit. Just take the title off Neville, give it to Aries. There's no harm done. You know, Neville's beat enough people. You know, he's, he's done all right, but give it to Aries. What have you got to lose? Next up was the tag team title match, Cesaro and Sheamus versus the Hardys. I still don't see how they can call them the Hardy Boys, they're hardly boys anymore. But, you know, it's WWE and they'll cling on to a last little bit if they can. Um, another really good match, you know, at this point it was three for three of really good matches. It was very hard hitting, uh, Jeff lost a tooth and Matt Hardy got a cut just above his eye. 
Matt also made a few delete gestures and actually shouted it a couple of times so I don't know if they're gonna bring that in it looks like WWE might have got the you know the rights to use the you know, broken gimmick I really really hope so fingers crossed um I never saw it in TNA while it was going on I and the people saw it afterwards because I wasn't really bothered about TNA but I can also say that the guy absolutely owned that gimmick and I really hope that he can bring it to WWE like I say he made enough uh, gestures tonight the crowd was having to delete and Matt at the first time he did it I thought he just forgot where he was and he did it but the second time he had plenty of time to think about it was doing it and he just did a delete comment and you know jumped off the turnbuckle onto um, can't remember whether it was Cesaro or Sheamus but yeah enough uh, delete comments were made excuse me so, uh, yeah, uh, the match ended um, with the Hardys getting the win. Yeah, so after a great match, there was a show respect at the end. The Hardys climbed up you know, to celebrate, and then Cesaro and Sheamus came back in and jumped him. So, obviously, the Cesaro Sheamus heel turn has happened, the one that everybody predicted. So, we'll see where this leads. Next up, Alexa Bliss versus Bailey for the Raw Women's title. Um, don't WWE just know how to fuck someone over and piss people off. Bailey's in a hometown, sorry, hometown, defending a title in front of her friends, her family, and everything. It's the, you know, with the exception of WrestleMania, it's probably the biggest match of her career because a lot of the people there will have seen her, will know her, etc., etc. So Alexa Bliss gets the win. Why? Why not give Alexa Bliss the win a bit further on? You know, let Bailey win it in her hometown. I know. Like it's not as like it used to be back in the day. We could guarantee the hometown hero one, but sometimes it's just nice. You know, it just it just fits. And Bailey's one of the people who just fits a hometown win. Um, Naomi got hers at Florida at WrestleMania. She got to come back and, and win the title back. Why not let Bailey have this win? Take it off for on Raw or whatever. But you know, to me, they should have given Bailey the win. It was a good match, and as you probably gathered, I was hoping Bailey would win, but wasn't to be. Is what it is. It's WWE, and they do what they do best. Alexa Bliss is a new Raw Women's Champion. Next up was the Arthur versus Wyatt House of Horrors. Um, I don't think anybody knew what this match entailed. I don't actually think WWE knew what they were doing at first, but uh, you know, it, it it got. You know, it would dumped on us, House of Horrors match. Um, so it started off with Artem being in a limo, pulling up at a house, and the door opening on its own, and walking over to the house after a tractor drove past with nobody on it. Um, it was obviously pre taped, despite having the live logo in the corner, it was definitely obviously pre taped. Um, Artem gets, sees White in the house, goes in, and Bray Wyatt looked a complete dick, he was wearing a wife beater vest of all things, you know, I would have thought he'd been wearing one of his usual t-shirts, you know, down with the machine or, you know, some sort of slogan thing described, well, whatever his latest thing is, but no, he's wearing a plain wine wife, plain white wife beater, which just didn't do him any favours, um, to me, my opinion, the whole thing looked like a really shit low budget horror movie, there was dodgy light and there was a room with loads of dolls hanging down from the roof and everything. Yeah, it just looked like a really shit low budget horror movie with a fist fight in it. So, this bit ended in the kitchen bit where Bray Wyatt threw a refrigerator, sorry, a freezer, refrigerator, whatever you want to call it, onto the top of Randy Orton. Walked outside, dropped his knee, shouted, follow the buzzers, and the entire lighting in the house turned red. Which was just cheesy as hell, it just looked ridiculous. So then he gets into the limo, tells the driver, you know, take me to the arena. So that ends that bit. We go, go back live to the arena and we have um, Seth Rollins versus Samoa Joe. Um, this was the second result of the night. Excuse me. <sighs> Excuse me, sorry guys. Um, I would have predicted wrong. I thought that. Joe would have come out on top, but I was wrong. Um, it was a good match. They, they obviously sold the injury to Rollins' his knee really well. Like I said, I would have predicted Joe to win, but you know, during the match, I started thinking of some sort of hooky ending they could give where 
but the guy still looked good because you know Seth Rollins beat Triple H at WrestleMania, you know, and Samoa Joe's got to look good because he's the new sort of enforcer for Triple H. So, but uh, no, um, Rollins got the the win. He um, reversed the Coquina clutch and got a pinfall victory, clean in the middle of the ring, and that was that. I was genuinely shocked, um, but happy. So then next up we have part two of the Wyatt versus Orton debacle. Um, the arena pulls, uh, limo pulls into the arena. Wyatt gets out, sort of staggers up to the ringside area. It goes down to the ringside and all the lights are off into the usual entrance. Uh, gets into the ring and when the lights come back on, Randy Orton stood behind him. Orton really took it to Wyatt, He's laid him out with a couple of chair shots and all sorts. And then just as it looked like Orton was about to get the win, there goes WWE's best move, you know, screw job number two. Uh, Bollywood boys, sing rubbers, whatever the hell you want to call them. The guys who were two bit jobbers one minute on the next tier and suddenly, you know, kick ass henchmen for Jinder Mahal uh, come out, grab all the uh, Randy Orton, he tries to fight him off. Then Jinder Mahal comes and hits him with the belt that he stole on SmackDown. Bray Wyatt, it's Sister Abigail. In my opinion, it, this is just my opinion, I'm not sure what anybody else is going to think of it. It was a shite match, there was a lot of hype, and it failed to deliver on. Um, I kind of see why they did the screw job, because Orton's still champion, so he has to look strong. Why it's got a fresh start on Raw. Excuse me. So he has to look strong, ready to go into his feud with um, Finn Balor. But I still maintain... The whole thing sucked and failed miserably to deliver anything special. Um, they might as well just had a street fight or something. The whole House of Horrors thing just... It reminded me of the, the um, earlier Broken Mac gimmicks, you know, with the total non-stop deletion and all that thing with Jeff when they had that match and everybody slated it. To me, this was a lot worse than that. It was just shocking. It was just a waste of time. And I couldn't wait for it to end. It was just appalling. And like I said, we got the screw job bullshit ending. You know, so yeah, then it comes to the main event, Reigns versus Strowman. I'm going to be honest, I had absolutely no enthusiasm for this match whatsoever. Not because I'm not a fan of Roman Reigns, I'm not jumping on the bandwagon and booing him just because he's the top guy at the moment. I just didn't have any enthusiasm. Um, I also think that most of the people cheering Braun Strowman um, were doing it because he was facing Roman Reigns. He was the one who was put to destroy Roman Reigns. They could have put fucking Hornswoggle in that position and the crowd would have got behind him. Anything to boo Roman Reigns. Uh, I just think, you know, any other night they wouldn't give two shits about Strowman if he was in a feud with Finn Balor, they'd be cheering for Balor. If he was in a feud with Bray Wyatt, they'd be cheering for Bray Wyatt. Put him in a feud with Rollins to cheer for Rollins. They only cheer him because he's beating the shit out of Roman Reigns. And to me, it's pretty fucking sad. If you really want to make a point, you know, Stick the message to Vince. Just don't have any reaction to Roman Reigns. When he's going to promo, don't chant, boo you, suck and boring. Just be dead quiet. That's going to piss Vince off more than you giving a reaction. Whatever you get in a, give a reaction, they're getting a reaction. And that's what they want. So, you know, it's just a thought. So, yeah, um, my lack of enthusiasm was warranted. Strowman won a very average match. Wasn't expecting much, didn't get much. Uh, Strowman beat Reigns up after the match, dropped him on the steel steps, hit him with the steel steps, left Reigns in the ring coughing up blood. And I will say this, the people that were chanting, you deserve it to Roman Reigns, are assholes. You're just assholes. The guy goes out, he does a job, he does what he's told to do. And, you know, he's, he's supposed to be selling an injury. And you're chanting, you deserve it. What a bunch of pricks. Mind you, about these are the same pricks that are still chanting CM Punk match, uh, uh, you know, Raw and stuff. You know, get over it, he's gone. I'm a CM Punk fan. But, you know, I don't, when I go to see WWE Live, I don't chant CM Punk. What's the fucking point? He's not there anymore. So, you know, but yeah, I thought it was pretty disgusting the people chanting, you deserve it while Reigns is there selling a, an injury. Um, but yeah, that was the end of the pay per view. Overall, it wasn't great. The uh, first few matches were good, like I said, the, the tag match, the US title match, and the cruiserweight match. And then it just went typical WWE bullshit, bullshit endings, screw jobs. 
all the usual crap really everything they can usually do to ruin a pay-per-view they sort of threw it together in the last few matches I'm honestly expecting Backlash to be better uh, I know that NXT TakeOver Chicago will probably piss out over Backlash and Payback because you know NXT pay-per-views I've yet to watch a bad one so yeah but um, like I say overall not great um, I've seen better was it worth you know people who paid for it uh, anybody who paid 15 20 pounds for that on sky i feel sorry for you i watched it on the network um which mad i only managed to do because i got an offer for three months free after i had the network and then cancelled my subscription i kept getting emails saying no we want you back and all this sort of crap but they dropped a, an offer on three months free so i got wrestlemania i've got t- tonight's payback i've got backlash Extreme Rules, Money in the Bank, and I think I get NXT TakeOver as well. So, you know, I'll see how they are, and if they're okay, I'll probably keep my subscription, but if they're not going to be as bad as this, I probably won't keep my subscription, because I wasn't blown away. So, um, yeah, that's that's my review. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you've got any comments, what you you know what you thought to the, you know, the pay-per-view, please feel free um, to leave them in the comment section below but um, as for me I'm going to bed because it's now five past four in the morning so as always I'll catch you later guys bye for now